Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Lunchtime Takeaway. We're going through Luke's Gospel every Thursday lunchtime and we're just looking at another chunk of the story. And this week we come to the point where Jesus makes the big announcement of his kingdom. Uh, He goes to the synagogue in Nazareth and if you like, he launches his manifesto. But before we come to that, let me just explain a little bit of the background that explains what he's saying. God's relationship with Israel had been broken by a massive trauma several hundred years before. The people of Israel had worshipped idols and therefore, because that insulted God and because that disobeyed God, they were sent into exile. In around about 600 BC, uh, Jerusalem was captured and reduced to rubble. The temple was razed to the ground and the people of Judah went off into exile. And as they were scattered, they were asking these sorts of questions. Where is God? What, why is he allowing this to happen? What is God doing? Why is he dealing with us in this way? In, in many ways, the kind of questions that we ask today during this pandemic. And even when they returned from exile and they were allowed to rebuild Jerusalem and rebuild the temple, life was not the same. God's presence wasn't there. He was still absent. And it's only with the coming of Jesus, some 500 years afterwards, that God announces his redemption. The the exile is over, if you like, and there's a new beginning. There's a new pathway out of exile. And that's what Jesus has come to announce as he goes into the synagogue in Nazareth. It's his hometown. They knew him. So there was, I guess, a familiarity issue, which we'll come to. And on the Sabbath day, he stood up and he unrolled the scroll and he read from the prophet Isaiah. And these are the words that he read, which Luke records for us. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Now just pick up on that little phrase, the year of the Lord's favour. What that is saying is the judgment of exile is over. God has come in favour and and kindness to look upon his people again and he's come to dwell with them in his son Jesus and that's a promise not just for Israel it's a promise for the whole world for all nations that he is pouring out his favor on the world how does God show his favor well um, we're told here by Luke that he he proclaimed good news to the poor the Bible has a bias to the poor Uh, if we're, pr- if we're wealthy, we are proud and we're smug and we're very much taken up with ourselves. But if we're poor and we're in need, we find it much easier, don't we, to cry out to God for help. And, and we're open to being helped because we know that we can't actually change our own circumstances. Jesus came to open blind eyes. That's what uh, this passage says. And he he came to set free those who are held captive. And next week we'll see how he set free someone who was held captive by evil spirits. But Jesus has not just come to do miracles. His miracles point to something bigger. When Jesus talked of liberty or freedom, he didn't just mean release from prison or release from oppression. The word for freedom is a word that can also mean pardon, forgiveness. It's the same word that's used in the Lord's Prayer when we pray, forgive us our trespasses. Jesus, in other words, has come to bring redemption, to set us free from spiritual bondage. We are caught in the slavery and the guilt of sin, and we can't escape from it. We cannot deliver ourselves. We need a redeemer who will come into our situation from the outside and pay the price that we cannot afford to pay. And that's what Jesus has come to do by his death. By dying on the cross, he will pay the price that we cannot pay. The price for our sin, our guilt, our shame will be put on him and paid by him. And he's announcing that as he stands up in the synagogue in Nazareth and says, I have good news. This is the year of the Lord's favour. 
Now, the problem for Jesus was that he was saying all of that in Nazareth. And that was his hometown, and they'd seen him come and worship there probably year by year, week by week. They'd seen him grow up, uh, and they knew him as a child, some of them. And so they say this in verse 22. They said, is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, the miracles that he did there, do here in your hometown as well. But Jesus isn't going to do those miracles. He isn't going to just deliver miracles on demand for people who will never change. These people need to come and believe in him. And they need to surrender to him as their Lord. They need to trust in him as their redeemer, just like I do, just like you do. And in verses 25 to 27, Jesus gives two examples of the right way to respond. And it's a little bit obscure when you first read it. He takes us back to two prophets, to Elijah and the prophet Elisha that came after him. Elijah went to a widow um, who sheltered him and he provided for her, God provided for her through Elijah. And she came to trust in Elijah in her time of great need and humiliation. Naaman the Syrian, on the other hand, was a foreigner and he was wealthy and he was powerful and he had leprosy and he was humbled enough to listen to the prophet Elisha and to take his instructions and go and wash in the River Jordan seven times. He was big and powerful and he had to be humbled and come and take the lowest position. So there's two examples of how to respond to Jesus. Jesus is saying, look, as they responded, so must you. If you're poor, come and trust me. If you're rich, come down off your high horse and put your trust in me just as much as those who are poor and realize it. And that's true for you and me. We need to realize that we need to humble ourselves and to come and surrender to Jesus as our Redeemer. Because only when we admit that we are enslaved, that we are trapped, that we have made a mess of life and that sin enslaves everybody, idolatry enslaves us and we can never escape from it. The only way to escape from it is to come and trust in Jesus as our Redeemer. He's the only one who can free us and it's only in him that we will find real freedom. Well, over the next few episodes, we're going to look at some of the people that Jesus met uh, and how he transformed their lives and how the gospel begins to get worked out in their situations. Thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again next week.